Hello, welcome back to the DL Software Digital Guide, the one-stop practical guide for DL Software Toolkits. This is part of the DLView video series that shows you how to use DLView more effectively. In this video, I'm going to talk about input files, specifically the input configuration file you supply to set up the corresponding force field models for molecular simulation runs. DLView can recognize three types of file format. PDB, MO2, and a simple XYZ. In this video, we are only going to discuss the PDB and XYZ formats in more details by referring to a few example structures. DLView can set up many types of models. Broadly speaking, they can be divided into two types of systems, the organic systems and the inorganic systems. Organic systems such as proteins, small drug molecules, or any systems that consist of predominantly covalent bonds. The inorganic systems are materials such as metals, minerals, glass, and so forth. DLFuel can also set up a mixture of both types of systems, namely the bio-inorganic systems. We are not going to discuss here how to set up such models, which will be discussed in other video. The way how input files can be prepared depends on which type of model you intend to set up. There may be slight variation and flexibilities to each file format depending on model types. Let's look at the PDB format. The PDB is the file format describing the structures of molecules held in the protein data bank. It is one of the most popular format to describe biological molecules such as proteins and DNA. The example shows here is a typical PDB protein file. Note, molecular structures downloaded from the protein data bank would need further processing such as removal of multiple occupancies, addition of hydrogen atoms and so on. This can be achieved via third-party software before the file can be processed by DLFU. DLFU follows the strict PDB standard format where different information must contain within the appropriate columns on a PDB file. However, not all information will be required by DLFU and only those relevant to the force field conversion process will be discussed here. For example, column 13 to 16 is the atom labels. This can be element symbols or quite often this can be some sort of labels of which DLFU will need to carry out further processing to determine the correct elements. Alternatively, element symbols can be supplied at columns 77 to 79. In this case, DLFU will extract the information here and bypass the atom labels. The residue labels, or in DLFU jargon, the molecule keys, are located at column 18 to 21. This information must be supplied so that the DLFU will be able to locate the correct molecule templates in the library to set up the correct force view models. Column 23 to 26 is the residue sequence. The number indicates the extent of a molecule or molecular residue and to differentiate them from one to the other. At column 22 is the chain identifier, which is a blank in this example. The LV will use this information to label atoms and molecules as a whole. Alternatively, the molecular group labels can be assigned at column 70 to 76, which will override any information at column 22 even if it is defined. In this example, the protein structure consists of two identical monomers stabilized by each other via the Van der Waal interactions. Each monomer, which consists of 153, amino acid residues are assigned with the molecular groups SOD1 and SOD2 respectively. Note that DLF will not process any information beyond the end statement. Any information after the end statement will be ignored. We now run DLF to convert the protein structure. First of all, edit the DLF control file and select a force field scheme and I'm going to use the CHARM22 force field.
we will leave the rest of the option unchanged with no periodic boundary condition. Now let's run DL view. You will notice DL view set up two molecular groups, SOD1 and SOD2. This is also shown in the field file. Here is another PDB example file, which consists of a single dodecyl sulfate molecule. Notice that no molecular group is specified. In this case, DLFU will assign a default name called not defined during the conversion process. We now look at the final example of a PDB structure. It is an inorganic system which consists of calcium carbonate minerals in water. It has the CC1 as the molecule key, of which the molecule template is defined in the oxide structure file. The notable difference between the organic and inorganic structure is the atom label. For organic structures, as we have seen earlier, it can be some labels or element symbols. For inorganic structures, the actual atom keys must be used. This means you would need to determine the type of atoms in the PDB file prior to running DL field. Most inorganic structures do not form bonds, and hence the self-connect method is used in the molecule template definition. However, it is still possible to define bonds for inorganic systems. In this case, you will need to use the auto-connect methods. In summary, whether you are using the self-connect or auto-connect methods, you would need to define the correct atom keys in your PDB files. Notice this PDB file also contains the cell parameter information. DLFU can read this information and set up the corresponding cell vectors during the conversion process. Let's look at the relevant structure file, or the SF file, for calcium carbonate. As you can see, the molecule template for the CC1 key is calcium carbonate 1, which is defined below. The molecule template calcium carbonate 1 uses the autoconnect method to set up the bonds for the carbonate anion with the isolated calcium cation. Note the actual atom keys being used here as defined above, which would be needed as the atom labels in your PDB file. Let's run DL view to set up the force field for, for the calcium carbonate structures. As usual, we will need to edit our control file as follows. We now set the periodic condition on the control file to auto. This means DLV will read the cell parameters in the input file and automatically set up the correct boundary conditions. Cell vectors defined in the control file will also be ignored. After DLV run is completed, you can look into the config file produced and note the cell vectors for the system. Let's turn our attention to the XYZ format. The XYZ files contain much fewer information than the PDB and is free formatted. It is therefore the easiest format to work with. However, the way how DLFU processes the XYZ files depend on the system types as well as the force field schemes. 
for general fossil fuel schemes such as CVFF, PCFF, and OPLS, DLFuel can carry out topological analysis on your systems and set up the fossil fuel models automatically. For template based fossil fuels such as CHARM, Ember, and certain specific fossil fuels such as the OPLS for ionic liquids, DLFuel will carry out molecular identification and automatically search for the matching templates in the libraries. However, for systems contain proteins and DNA, you will still need to use the PDB format. Let's look at the first example structure, an XYZ file that contains a single organic molecule. This is favipiravir. It is an antiviral drug molecule used to treat influenza. For the first line, you have the total number of atoms. This is followed by a line that contains the title or cell parameter information. Note that all atoms must be expressed in the standard element symbols, and each must be followed by the corresponding three XYZ coordinates. We will run DLFU and set up the OPLS force view for this molecule. Here is the DL polyfuel file produced after running DL fuel. Notice, it shows a molecule name called XYZ. This is the default label given by DL fuel if it is not defined in the XYZ file. I'll show you later how to define the name. In addition, for XYZ input structures, DL fuel will always produce a file called DLF notation.output. This file shows the chemical identity of every atom in the systems in addition to its connectivities environments. Here is another example structure. It is a long chain quaternary ammonium ion with a formal charge of plus one at the nitrogen atom. Since the nitrogen formed part of the covalent bonding with the molecule, it will be expressed with the usual element symbol N. In addition, a chloride counter anion is also included. Since the chloride anion is an isolated species, a correct formal charge symbol must be indicated in the file. It has a formal charge value of negative 1 and therefore it is expressed as Cl-. For a charge 2 species, for example a calcium ion, it will have a value of 2 plus and expressed as Ca2 plus in the file. The next example shows how you can introduce the cell parameter information and molecular groups in the system. Here, the example system consists of two ethanoic acid molecules. One was assigned to the molecule group A1 and the other to A2. Note that cell parameters can only be defined at the second line of the XYZ file or where the title is. We now turn our attention to inorganic systems. This is the equivalent XYZ format of the calcium carbonate system that we have previously discussed on the PDB format. The notable differences between the organic and inorganic systems for the XYZ format is the use of molecular group and the molecule key directives. As we have seen earlier, for organic systems, the molecular group directives is optional. The LF will use the label XYZ if this is not defined. For the atom labels, the standard element symbols must be used. For inorganic systems, the molecular group must always be defined. This must also follow with the molecule key that indicates the type of the system model. In other words, new molecule key must also define alongside with a new molecular group. In addition, the atom labels can be expressed either in the standard element symbols or the atom keys. This is another example file, which is a clay mineral. Here, the appropriate atom keys were used. Before leaving this tutorial session, I just want to describe the ease of using DLFuel to set up a core shell model of your system. We now look at this final example structure, which is a magnesium oxide system. As you can see, the template molecule MO3 is used. By referring to the binary oxide library file, you will notice there are three different magnesium oxide model templates obtained from different sources. These templates were shown in the file if you scroll further down. 
As you can see, the M03 is a rigid iron model and DLV will set up the force field accordingly. You can use different magnesium oxide template by simply changing the molecule key to, say, MO2, which is a core shell model. DL fuel can still set up the force fuel using the same input file by automatically adding new entries for the missing shell parts of the model. That's it. I hope you enjoyed this video session and become more familiar how to prepare your input files. Thank you and goodbye.